Hey, it's me again, and I'm a bird. I I am so looking forward to the comments that I will get saying I'm not credible or why do I listen to this person? They're a bird. I'm taking the Richard Simmons approach. Richard Simmons built a whole fitness empire on dressing goofy and being non-threatening to get people to exercise, right? I'm taking the Richard Simmons approach. I'm making stocks fun again. Woo! But I'm not a chart reader. If you look, I have, like, I don't really read a chart. For CEI, I sort of explain chain of events on, like, mapped over the chart. But I'm not a chart reader. There's plenty of chart readers. I'm more of a case study and a quantitative analytics person applied. So, I'm a bird. Quantitative analytics says it has to be scary. Uh, my, my teacher, quantitative teacher, his name was Mr. Cusdro in college. I took like eight classes with him. Uh, I think he took the non-threatening approach. <laughs> he didn't dress like a bird. If, if he did, I would be so happy. So I'm a, I'm a bird. I got to roll up my sleeves because there's going to be a lot of math today. Today, we're looking at the case study of the um, acquisition. This company, Northern Oil and Gas, acquired an oil property from this other company, Versailles. Um, I'm not reading this. If I read it, I tend to, like, do this or squint, so I'm just reciting it from memory. They bought it. Okay, and it includes, not that it is relevant, but 6,000 acres. So today we're going to apply the roller pigeons method of math to this case study quantitatively to give you, in a mathematical way, a quantitative analytical way, confidence about MMTLP and my dividend predictions, um, and why I'm so excited. Now remember, this, this is not fact. I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. I'm a little bird, okay? I'm a bird. And the dividend amount, you could just say a little bird told me. A little bird told me. I'm a bird. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is my disclaimer. I'm goofy, all right? This is an opinion. Okay, let's get into it. So, Northern Oil and Gas bought this property. Well, they did buy the property. All the properties leased. They bought the mineral rights to this property. That's what they're buying. And it's 6,000 acres. Now, it is. it talks about its current production, which it depends on how many streams you do. Um, it can go up to 11,000 a day, but conservatively, it's like 9,100 a day. And that's what we're using. And this article also states it has a PV of 10. That's perfect. It's, PV means peak value. Or your half-life. So if you pump out 9,100 barrels a day, your half-life is 10 years. That's when you start to really taper off production. That's your half-life of oil. You're going to really taper off production um, to extend it out, you know, to be like 30 years or something. So as a result, um, PV10, half-life. So we're going to multiply this by 20. Perfect. There's so much data here. Look, we can calculate so many things. Because the Ora Grande Basin... For torchlight, we know the quantity of oil. Let's get into it. First, we're going to calculate. I have, so I have all these numbers here on this. I just, for ease of use. Okay. So, they produce northern. That's the wrong pen. Northern oil produces. Ninety one hundred barrels of oil a day. If you multiply that by three hundred and sixty five, you get three million three hundred twenty one thousand five hundred barrels of oil a year. The PV is ten. That means half life of ten years, so twenty. But it's not gonna it's gonna go a little bit longer than twenty because you're gonna taper it down. <clears throat> and they might not even be able to get all this amount out. But the half-life is 10, so that's great. We can PV10, we can we can get some numbers off this. So you multiply 3.321 500 by 20. Oh, 
and we're going to multiply that by 20 years. And as a result, you get 66,430,000 barrels of oil. That's not that much. 66 million barrels of oil. Or Grande has 2.6 at least. 3.7 median. This billion barrels. This is million. It's not even hundreds of millions. So, Northern Oil paid for this. They paid for this. Uh, four hundred and six million dollars in cash, and then they had warrants. Now, if you look on here, they had one point nine around one point nine million dollars of warrants with a strike price of twenty eight point three. If you multiply twenty eight point three by hundred nine mil by one point nine million one point nine million, you get fifty three million seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars of warrants. If you add these two numbers together. You know, 53.77 million plus 406 million dollars of cash. That's how much they paid for cash. 106.5. You get 460 million 27. So they paid cash. And then they paid warrants. It was about $53.7 million. And that's a total price of $460.27 million for everything. Remember, there's a cash and warrants price. This is, this is going to get interesting. Okay, now we know how much oil is on this property. There's 66,430,000 barrels of oil. About the time that the deal was signed. So the deal was announced on the on the 16th of November. So before then, uh, we don't this is there's two big factors here. What was the current price of oil when the agreement was signed? That we don't know because we don't know exactly when the agreement was signed. What what the strike price of oil was. What's the strike price? I don't know this. If I knew this, um, I'd, I'd be a bajillionaire. Okay. And then what's, there's also another factor in that, which is negotiated upon. And we'll talk about it in a second. It's part of the formula. This, we also don't know for this particular sale. However, for the hour grand day, we'll assume it's the lower value because there's so much oil. That's your discount because there's so much oil. And there also isn't much infrastructure on the Oro Grande. Yeah, there's a few rigs. There's a few new rigs. But that's really irrelevant in the big scheme of things. There's so much oil. Also, this is based purely on the price of oil, not the rigs. Oil rigs and infrastructure is depreciated aggressively. And we've talked about that in previous uh, analytical videos. It has a seven-year depreciation cycle. And it's depreciated all the way to zero with a zero salvage value on it. Um... So it's, it's very aggressively depreciated with zero salvage. What a tax discount. Okay. Now, the current price of oil will we'll we'll say it was around $81 when the contract was signed. It could be more, it could be less. We'll say $81 minus $25. Okay, okay that's, the, that's the shale average cost of goods sold. Now this, this is called the roller pigeons math method. I'm roller pigeons on Reddit, so yes, this is this is the method. I feel like I'm Clinton Anderson. So like I live in Central Texas, and it's like a big horse capital, and there's this town not too far away. It's called Stephenville, and like all the horse people like live there. And there's this one horse guy. His name is Clinton Anderson. He's from Australia, and he does this, I guess, natural type horsemanship, basically like a dog whisperer. I'm going to beat your butt horsemanship. Um, and he calls it the Clinton Anderson method. He's like, have you tried the method? We're going to apply the method here and we're going to work on this horse. Like, and then he had this YouTube show for a while where he took in like problematic horses and he beat their butts and uh, he applied the method. So um, 
we're, I feel like I'm Clinton Anderson. Good day, I'm Clinton Anderson. We're gonna apply the method. Okay, so we're gonna apply the method. The roller pigeons method here. All right. So 81 minus 25 cost of goods sold. That leaves you 51 gross price. Gross. So the oil that you pay is not that. That's your gross price. According to the Texas A&M method, which evaluates oil based like, you know, a barrel amount, how much that is, you know, cost of goods sold, what's the price of oil not in a barrel, what's the price of oil in the ground, it's crazy, it's crazy. So, um, oil in the ground has a value of 12 to 18% of this gross price, 12 to 18% of this 51. That's how much you value oil in the ground that's not pumped out. So we're going to take the lower, conservative 12%. We're going to multiply $51, the gross price of oil, by 12%. When you do that, you get $6.12. Now, that's for 100% of the mineral rights. Torchlight, um, mineral rights-wise, that's the revenue interest. Working interest, they have 66.5. Mineral rights, they have 49%. So... Um, this is if they get 100% of the mineral rights, which they didn't say that they had so much. Like, other sales I've looked at in the past, like, like um, the Continental Agreement, it said, you know, for 90%. The Shell was 100% the mineral rights, but then the Continental, <clears throat> the Continental Devon, that was like, that was like for 90% mineral rights. So, um, we'll assume 100%. So, $6.12 a barrel. And we know how many barrels there are. There's 66 million. So we multiply 66 million by $6.12. What do we get? We get $406,551,000. We get this. If you multiply 66 million barrels of oil by $6.12, assuming that oil was $81 a barrel, could have been more, could have been less. We get this. $406.5 million. That number looks familiar. For They paid a cash price of $406 million.5. Now I'll insert that little, like, that little picture here of the sale. $406,500,000 of cash. Plus warrants. Plus warrants. So, the warrants, you know, could cover, maybe they gave warrants for infrastructure. Maybe there's some pipeline on the property. Maybe the rigs, you know, they, they were paying for some of the prop price of the rigs. Um, so, it was a cash, you know, and warrant deal. But these two numbers sort of match up. $406 million of oil, $406.5 million of oil, $406.5 million of cash. They sort of match up. So, roller pigeons, the method. Have you applied the method? I feel like Clinton Anderson. Clinton Anderson, by the way, <clears throat> sells very, very expensive DVD sets of him training. He also has a payable app now, which is basically just a DVD set. Uh, he makes a lot of money in his empire. It's very respectable. Like, he wants, like, this outrageous price for a rope halter. It's crazy. It, it, I respect him because his property is massive. He has this massive horse. He's built this huge empire of horses. Richard Simmons built a fitness empire. Okay. So, roller pigeons, the method. We have... We'll move some decimals to make this number smaller. 406... Million four hundred six point five five one million dollars. Now, Oro Grande Basin. We know how much oil there is. Torchlight has known quantities of two point three to three billion barrels of oil to three point seven billion barrels of oil in the ground. Let's apply the method. Um, first, we're going to do the low end, two point three billion barrels. Oil's price on Friday, WTI, West Texas Light, on Friday, the value of oil was 
$75. Ended on a good note, like George Costanza. $75 minus cost of goods sold, $25. It gives us a lovely number of $50. A barrel, gross. Now, we want 12 to 18% of that is the value of oil in the ground. So we'll take 12. $50 times 12 is... Six dollars. Twelve percent. Six dollars. Great. Now, remember, or grande, torchlight's revenue interests, their percentage of the mineral rights is 49 percent. So, 49 percent of six dollars is two dollars and ninety-four cents. We can apply this to both, both scenarios here of 2.3 billion barrels in the low side to 3.7. So it's two dollars and ninety four cents. So let's times let's multiply two dollars and ninety four cents to two point three billion barrels of oil. You get six point seven six two billion dollars. Now you have to minus the tax man, which is twenty one percent. And you have to take out that 10% for underwriter management. <clears throat> if there's a franchise tax fee, that'll all be covered in that 10%. So once you take out the 10%, you're left with $4.8 billion. You divide that by outstanding shares, which is $165 million. And your price per share is 29.13. Again, the 29.13, that's does not include the Hazel project. This is just the Ore Grande. Now let's go to the median of 3.7 billion. So we have 3.7 billion times 2.94 dollars. That's what Torchlight gets, the revenue for each barrel in the ground. You get $10.87 billion. Let's account for taxes. We've got to take out corporate taxes, 21%, which you're left with 8.59. And the management fee, which is 10%, you're left with $7.7 .7 billion. 7.73 billion divided by outstanding shares of 165 million. You're left with $46.87. So we'll say 46. And this is the Oro Grande. So excluding the Hazel project. So we have a dividend range of $29 to $46. I'm sticking by my, my, my original number still, you know, of 30. I said 30, 34. Um, I'm sticking by it. You know, I, I said 35 in the last video. That could very well be the case. Um, the Hazel, I'm not sure who the Hazel was sold to. If it was, if it was exercised to McCabe or Masterson, they got a discount on it. Or if they, somebody else bought it at market price. If somebody else bought it at market price, it's, it's a pretty good price you're looking at. That's, you know, at least a few dollars per share. And that would definitely be that 30 to, you know, $35 range. So low end, you know, you're looking at $30. And that's the high end, the median to high end. This is why I'm excited about MMTLP and I'm buying all I can. So this is my my dividend range with that i'm going to i'm going to fly the coop i will see you soon goodbye